<coughs> Hello, you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Well, then again, you know that, don't you? Because that's why you tuned in. All right, today I'm joined by Mickey Theo for Essex. How are you doing, Mick? Yeah, fine, thanks. Beginning, beginning to be a regular uh, Friday thing, this, isn't it? Make that Friday feeling. <laughs> it is indeed. <coughs> yeah. So what have you been up to? Just running around all day, sorting things out. Got builders outside, just fi fixing the site up. Um, yeah, all good. Did you watch the uh, Chisora Usek fight, Mick? I did. What did you think? Uh, I wanted Chisora, like I said, to win. Listen, he was going to go for the knockout. Um, I can't believe with all the training he's done, that he seemed to be blown quite early in the fight, which, um, you know, is a bit unusual. Yeah. Um, and this meant a lot to him, because winning this would take him to bigger, higher places, you know? Yeah. So David Hay was uh, thinking about <laughs> the dollars. Yeah. <laughs> But what anyway, do think, what do you think, Mick, about the strength and conditioning team that is brought on board and the guy we're working with Dylan, but he's not with Dylan now, he's with Derek. I think you've been done working with them both. What do you think about, like you just said, his condition there, they're bringing all these people on board. Do you think there's too much information going into boxes? Everybody's looking for an edge, aren't they? And they're spending money on fighters and camps. Do you, be, do you think things are being overanalyzed too much, mate? Well, I think David's put him in that position um, because of what he's gone through originally back in the day. Um, David's always come in great condition. I mean, David could have done it himself, got him in condition with his experience. Yeah. Because uh, David always comes in tip top shape, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know much about his team either. So. Um, if you get too many people on board, you're hearing too many things coming in and out. So you've got to think, well, who am I listening to? Do I listen to that one? Do I listen? You know, it's a bit confusing. Dot com, yeah. shall I say. Um, so it's best to have one decent condition, I suppose, and stick with him. I mean, Derek's not, um, you know, he's been in the game for quite a while now. He's not no spring chicken. He's, he's getting on. He's been in many fights over the years. He's had, he's had many conditioners. So he should know better. He should know his body. He should know what he needs to do. Who's good, who's bad out of this guy at the camp. So, I suppose, because David's involved, he's trying to change things for Derek and put him in the right direction. David only wants him to win anyway, which is only, only good and fair to say. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay, then. Uh, what do you think of the fight itself? You know, obviously, we'll just Chisora. According to CompuBox, Usyk threw more punches in nine rounds the shared and landed the shared uh, one round and, and Chisora won two rounds. So basically, Chisora landed less punches in nine of the rounds and drew one. So it were nine, two, and a drawn round. What do you think about Coldwell and Bellew having it to uh, Derek at the end? Well, listen, we, it's in black and white what we've seen. Yeah. Um, it was a bit, I think they were a bit wrong in, in what they're saying. Listen, as much as I want Derek to win the fight, you know, I can say, well, yeah, they're right, but they're not right. Uh, they're not yeah. correct. Um, probably the favour in him, um, it's like, you know, it's like being away judges will favour their, their boxer and same here. So, um, no, it wasn't right. Um, I think Derek won the, probably the first. I think they, Derek was ahead on the first. He was going for the knockout in the first, up, to, up to the fourth round, I think. Maybe fifth. But he was going for the, 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 the one and only knockdown, uh, knockout, TKO. Um, it didn't happen. And I think he tried too hard. Instead of boxing off his back foot, moving along with him, you know, throwing a few jabs here and there, he just went for the kill. And, it, and to me, Derek looked more slower. And um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, he, he, started, he couldn't put it on. And he was very slow. You know, when you, you're boxing, you you I'm trying to see what I know. Yeah. When you're boxing and you're flicking, 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 and then you're trying to put, you want to put that power through, yeah, you're using all that energy. And that's when you start blowing. Um, but all the viewers out there probably say, what the fuck do I know? You know what I mean? But anyway, I'm just giving you my opinion. What I know, what I believe, what I've been through in life, uh, in, in, in the boxing game. 
Um, and if you try too hard to hit something, and it's all about breathing at the end of the day, you know, you've got to breathe and relax while you're in there and just flip the punch out. You know, if you're just trying to give it too much power, you're gonna you're gonna blow, you know. Um, mm -hmm. it's all about flicking, moving, flicking, moving, flicking, and breathing. And if he'd done that at the early stages, he would have lost better, he would have probably gained more points, and he may have won a point. Um because moving around, flicking them out, connecting with the opponent is another thing. But when you're trying to go out and blast the opponent out and, and blast all your energy and your and your your, your lungs out, yeah, that's when you start blowing and having problems. Yeah. There's two ways in a, in a match. You either go out for the blast and knock him out in the first round, if not the second round, yeah? Give it what you got. Or but Derek was going fourth up to the fifth round maybe you're trying to do it. And he's still trying to do it in the later rounds when he was excuse my French completely fucked. Um, maybe you got second wind in the, in, in the seventh, maybe, and give him a little bit more. But uh, listen, it didn't go to plan, unfortunately. Um, I think if he fought him again, he'd structure it in another way, and, and he would like take his time, move around, you know, relax, box, which he can do. Um, yeah. Uh, you've, you've had a lot of stick, mate, regarding the comment you made in the last video you did with me where you said that you didn't rate Usyk's footwork. <laughs> Were you trolling when you said that, mate? No, I don't rate his footwork. Um, <laughs> listen, anyone could do what Usyk done the other day because someone's coming at you with bombs, so you have to get out of the way. Anyone would run out of the way, yeah? yeah. Especially what Derek... Usyk's a bit smart in a sense. He had to get out of the way. But look, look at the way he, he was getting caught while he was trying to get out of the way, Yeah. Yeah. You know, if someone's coming for you and, you, and you're, you're, you're skillful, like you six is meant to be, which I don't believe he is, everyone's rating him. But I have my opinions, like you have your opinions, yeah? yeah. And I, I tell the truth. Um, you know, if Derek's coming up, you sit underneath him, you step aside, you know, you'd laugh at him, you'd do some wiggity jiggities or something, I don't know, to, you know, say, show your footwork off, you know? But he was getting caught a lot of times when he's trying to get out of trouble on his footwork. So, yeah. Did he have good footwork? If he did, he won't get caught, would he? Yeah. All right, then. Uh, <clears throat> what next for Derek Chisora, now that he's got 10 losses? What next? Well, apparently he's fighting Dylan White, isn't he? I heard. I can't see him doing that. It, they'd be classed as pimps if they did that. I don't think Ed Robinson and Sky would go for that. Um, I, bad I, taste, I think, Sorry, I think he's been confirmed. Well, I'm not 100%, but I think it has been. I've seen it on my phone somewhere. Mick, if you went for that fight, right, he'd be in bad taste, I think, because he, he can't put somebody in with somebody 21 days later after he's lost nine rounds. You can do if you want a bit of money out of it. Yeah, <laughs> you can do anything. He's not going to be at his best, is he? And fans are going to be shortchanged on a pay-per-view with a man with 10 losses who's just took who's just took a school in. Three weeks later, he's going in with another guy, uh, another heavyweight, uh, who's beating... Yeah, they're, talk, they're talking about... Uh, they're talking about the third fight with Dylan White, aren't they? I don't so, think that'll happen. I don't think it'll happen, mate. It can't do. Well, look, Povetkin has pulled out because he's got the coronavirus, apparently. Hmm. Yeah. Derek Chisoris is an opponent for him. And I think the crowd, and I'd like to see him get, get it on a game. Uh, hmm. You know, Derek and, and, and Dylan three. That's what they're announcing there at the moment. But I don't know if it's going to go through. Or maybe it's just... Cool. Or maybe maybe David's made a poster up to make it look good. Maybe that fight can happen as a promoter, a manager. Down the line, down the line it'll happen probably. Chisora White, but I think I think I next think year he's got to fight for Vetic in January, and then he might go April Chisora because Joshua will be tied up next year, won't he? And even if he does beat Povetkin, he'll not get the WBC shot because Tyson will be tied up. So he's still going to need, need to be out twice next year, Dylan White, on pay-per-views, isn't he? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't want to see that fight, to be honest, because you've got a man with 10 losses who's way past his best. Derek's way past his best. You've got to admit that, Mick, haven't you? Um, well, I don't know. With the performance Derek um, gave us the other day, he was a bit slow, um, but considering he's done all the conditioning and all the work 
that's supposed to be a done. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to say. Is it has he come to the end, Derek? I think he's still bit, got, got, got a bit of gas in him still, you know. Do you think, Mick, that uh, Derek needs to go back to Don Charles, apologise? And do what made him a good fighter back in the day, because he won British Commonwealth European, didn't he? He fought vitally, he put a good performance up. Since then, I think they've just been papering up at cracks, and they've had Eddie Earn, the mouthpiece out there, just bigging him up. That's my opinion, Mick. I think they've bigged him up and given him a better platform than what he had with Brick Top, and they, they, they've rammed him down his throat as this big star. He's been rolling all over it on floor press conferences. Spitting in people's faces, flipping tables. He's been doing all the antics. He was working for it. Yeah, it was Yeah. And knocking bums out. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, uh, I, like, I like Don Charles. I've met him a few times. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, we've, uh, we've had a bit of breakfast together in the, in the cafe and that. Uh, he's, he's a nice guy. And uh, yeah, I think he's a great trainer. And honestly, I think he should go back with Don. So, Derek, if you listen to this, you still have David as your manager. Just go back to your trainer, mate. You know, you know it, these are your roots where you've been brought up, and you know you've planted the seeds, and you you you, you know you award the titles and you knock the people out, you know, and you spam people's faces and slap the Kalichikos. You know, I think that was great what you've done. Um, shows you're up for it. <clears throat> Do you feel that people now want David A to manage them because he's got big social media platforms? And he can basically copy the Eddie Earn model where they just talk and talk and talk and throw enough mud and eventually some sticks. Do you think that's why David A's which is all? Because Derek thinks, look, I'll just let him be my mouthpiece and get me out there. Exactly. I, I think the same, um, basically, because, uh, uh, listen, David Hayes is great at, uh, at getting the shows on, you know, and, and getting his, his fighters. Well, I don't know who else who, who, who he's got or who's managing. I think Joe Joyce was with him. I'm not sure. I think he's gone, gone away from him. You what, mate? Joe Joyce? Yeah, I think he was with um, um, David Hay before. I don't think he's with him still, is he? I can't no. remember. Uh, um, uh, David can get fights on because he's, he, he knows how to do that. That's what he does, and that's his game at the end of the day. And uh, hence, that's why Derek fought, uh, you know, when he fought the weekend. Do you think that David A and Chisora will be looking for Dylan White to get beat against Povetkin so that they know it's a guaranteed fight with Dylan White and Chisora because they're both coming off losses? Or do you think they'll be wanting Derek, so, uh, sorry, Dillian to, to beat Povetkin? I think they'll want him to lose, personally. Want who to lose? The Pavet uh, Dylan? Yeah, I think they'll want him to lose in January when he fights Povetkin. Um, is that on then, that one in January? Yeah, nine week Eddie Hearn said yesterday. Or what, after the corona or something, is it? Yeah, Conor Ben's going to headline on the 21st now, not uh, Ian. So it's, yeah. it's only putting it back nine week, he says. So nine week from November 21st takes you to, uh, I don't know, what, 9, 7, 63, 31, 40, 23rd of Jan, is it? When you say, do they want uh, Dylan to, to, to lose, who's they? David A and Chisora. Uh, listen, possibly vice versa. If it was the other table to turn, Ed probably wanted to lose as well, you know, um, because they want to go for the title shot, don't they? They want to put themselves in position to fight up one of the, you know, Tyson or AJ or someone yeah. like that. What do you think, Mick, is going to happen now with the WBO, with Usyk, he's the mandatory, Daniel Dubois, he's number two, and he fights Joyce. If the bar beats Joyce, do you think that Brick Top's going to push for that man for the, the mandatory for Joshua against Usyk, hoping that Joshua vacates and that it's Usyk Dubois? Because I'm tipping Dubois to beat Frankenstein. That's well, I, I, can't, I can't see uh, Joshua vac vacating. Can you? It, well, I mean, they say it's all rose to undisputed, but would Usyk? Would Joshua be able to beat Usyk? I'm not so sure. Um, personally, I'd say yes, Joshua can beat Yusuf. On, on what yeah. evidence, mate? Um, on what evidence? Listen, I know he's, he's come out the last his last fight um, and winning the belts back. He, 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 I've got to 
I say he fucking shit himself, fucking hit and run merchant. Um, he should have, you know, got in there, moved forward for the kill and knocked him out. That's what the crowd want to see. But Joshua's uh, side or opinion or views of what he done, he said, you know, in this game, you never stop learning. I've just learned to hit and run. Uh, sorry, not hit and run. Hit boxer, like in and out, basically. Yeah, so he did. Against the uh, fat 20 stone man who were out of shape. <clears throat> exactly. You know. We can't judge was, that, mate, can we? Listen, as a boxer, people want to see people gaining like Mike Tyson used to do, yeah? But Joshua, I mean, he was scared to go in. He, he thought if he gets caught, in knowing he, he got beaten from the same guy, um, if he gets caught, he gets one hand punches a game, he's going down. And that's why he done what he done. And, um, yeah. you know, he, he was just basically hit and run. Um, and he thinks that's a, that a bit, that's a bit skill for him. But he didn't look good doing that. Um, anyone could do that, I suppose. And like you say, against the big, heavy, um, I don't really want to use the word fat man because, listen, he, you know, he's a big man, you know what I mean, uh, against him. Uh, so if Joshua has, had, has got a hit and run against an opponent that's well overweight, yeah, what's he going to do with someone that's quite, you know, quite lean and solid and, you know, do the same thing, you know? So oh, um, I'll throw a curveball at you, mate. If Usyk... For Andy Ruiz, who would you say would win? Um, I think uh, Usyk, um, because uh, honestly, I just think Andy Ruiz is, is a little bit slow, um, and Usyk has got he's got listen, he's a cruiserweight, he's got the speed. Um, he's not a proper heavyweight. He will never be a proper heavyweight. Um, yeah, it's got to be Usyk. Did you know that Usyk? Weighed more than when Fraser beat Ali in 1971. Who did? You... When Fraser fought Ali in 1971, Usyk weighed more than him. The other really? Night. Wow. No, I never knew that. Yeah. Deceiving. Yeah. Deceiving. Over a stone heavier. So do you feel yeah. like... It... I'm going to go for a Peter Fury theory here. Peter Fury says, any man that hits you... 15 stone up, who can punch? He's going to hurt you. He says 15 stone, 19 stone. There's no difference. Mike Tyson were only 15 and a half, wasn't he? Yeah. So, Usyk, right, he's 15 and a half stone. He was fighting at 14 for, so he's put a bit of weight on. But I think he's still big enough to hang in that division, me. All these people that can say... Fucky, not me, Tyson Fury. Oh, Wilder, oh, Joshua, is not big enough. Oh, they I'll, I'll, give you, I'll, I'll give you a question. I'll give you a question. I don't know, so let me, let me finish the question. But David A beat Value F, didn't he? Yes. Right, that was a 23 stone man against a 15 and a half stone man, wasn't it? Yeah. You go. yeah. So I don't think size uh, it, it matters at this stage of game. That's what I think. <laughs> You're right, because I'm, I'm a lot, lot, uh, lot lighter than John Fury. <laughs> I wonder <laughs> when you get, get on to John Fury. <laughs> You've got a point there, but I've got three with that point. We're, we're speaking about Usyk now, though. So you're Ooh. saying Usyk beats Andy Ruiz. Well, Joshua's just beat him, but every time Ruiz came forward, Joshua would win back. Now, that's a confidence problem. Whether he's got his confidence back now, or that, I don't know. They've got the belts back. That's the main thing. But point all the I don't think he's got confidence. Hey, let me finish. Sorry, mate. I think Gusek beats Joshua. You don't, do you? Usek beats Joshua. I no, I don't. Know so, but then, yeah, I know what you're saying. You caught me out there, but in the, in that question, yeah. People keep looking at Joshua, they keep thinking he's got big muscles and he can fight, but once you get it on that chin, all your confidence is shattered, isn't it? 100%, but I think he got caught in the ear that day, eardrum, balance was gone completely. Um, the, only way you're, time, though, the, the only way you're going to get better on the chin is take shots all the time in sparring and, and shake them off. Yeah. You know? Get immune to them. All right. You know? And then that punch run. <laughs> Moving on then, Mick, what did you think about Savannah Marshall uh, winning a world title with Peter Fury? I think she was unbelievable. Yeah. 
She was a bollocks, honestly. She was amazing. I couldn't believe what I was seeing in front of me. You know, the combinations that she was throwing for a lady. I'm not say I haven't seen any lady, any girl or lady out there throw what she threw that night. And yeah. I take my hat off to Peter for what he's done, he's done a marvellous job. You know, she's, oh. she's, I mean, she's dynamite. She's, she's going to be world, well, she is world champion, but she's going to be the undisputed, uh, the way she's going. Oh, just amazing, amazing. It really shocked me to see the way she was throwing angles and relaxed and yeah. um, amazing. Such a tall lady, you know. And what Great. did you think, Mick, then, uh, about Sky Sports employing Bellew and Caldwell as ringside pundits, but they were screaming and jumping up and down like banshees uh, at the side of the ring, trying to off-put Usyk and influence the judges. What did you think about that? Do you think they've got a conflict of interest with being pals with Chisora? Do you think that were a bad move by Sky and Matchroom? Well, we definitely, Matchroom was the main instigator behind it, I believe. But, you know, they're trying to do that. They're trying to do the best. They want to be heard, don't they? In the crowd, obviously, there's no crowd there, but they they want to be heard, and they don't want it done. Yes, I suppose they're supporting their uh, the, 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 their boxer, so uh, there's no harm done at the end of the day. But uh, listen, Tony can talk. Um, um, I don't know. He's going to be talking well against his friend, isn't he? At the end of the day. Um, he's, he's not a bad talker, but um, employment-wise, I think Eddie's, Eddie, Eddie wants them in there. Um, I think it's Eddie's doing that at the end of the day. Not Sky's, but it is oh, what it is. Did, did you uh, agree with Tony Bell, you having it five rounds to one to Gisora after six rounds? No. Right. And, did you, and you don't agree with him having Gisora winning the fight? Definitely not. Sure, right then. And I'm the one who wanted to fight. I was, I was going to put money on it as well. Yeah, you did with me, fifty quid. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that one. We'll have a double or quits, Mick, on another show. Uh, moving on then, let's put that Sky Show to bed. Uh, what did you think to uh, Eddie Hearn's interview last night, where he was plugging his book eight times? Evening, Eddie. What did you think of the interview last night where Eddie Hearns, he's it, basically set about Joe Gallagher. I didn't see that, personally. He okay, set about him. He said he didn't want to work with him. And that puts Joe Gallagher in a tight spot now because it, him and Bricktop can't work together. So that Eddie Hearns is the only game in town for now for Joe now. And now they fell out. Joe well... Okay. He's got loads of boxers, Joe, isn't he? He's got some good boxers on in his right. hand. He might they, not have them anymore because them boxers might be looking at their contracts now and saying, here, Joe, you've messed it up for us. We, we uh, match them now, so they might be terminating the management deals. I don't know how, I don't know how they're going to go on with trainers' deals. I don't know, but he's put Joe um, Gallagher in a situation where Joe's either going to, like where he said, if you don't like it, go elsewhere, or... He's going to let him stew, and then they're going to offer him even shorter money. So this is what this is. Do you feel now that if anybody speaks out now, they can be discarded very quickly because there's no slots around and everybody's got to keep their mouth shut? Because people yeah. open their mouths after shows, and then they're, then they're saying sorry in other interviews. And I mean, we've had Caldwell. He's done about eight or nine interviews. Oh, I got it wrong. I got it wrong. Me and Tony, we got it wrong. Do you feel that? That's the way boxing's going now. People are frightened after not being the it, it, it looks like it. Um, it looks like it's in favour for Eddie on that on that subject. Yeah. He's got he's got so big and powerful in that game. Um, he's taking control basically. He's like, listen to me, do what I say, or basically fuck off. Yeah. Sounds like it. It looks like it. It acts like it. It's happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yep. uh, all right then. Uh, we spoke about Dylan White. Uh, now Dylan White's been offered Hunter, and he's knocked it back. Now, uh, and he's saying now he definitely wants Povetkin. Do you feel that Dylan White's frightened to take the Hunter fight on the twenty-first, and he's he's waiting for Povetkin an extra nine weeks, or do you think he should have took that Hunter fight? 
I think he's a bit hurt and done by by the last knockout with Bobetkin. That's why he wants him. He wants him because he, he knows he can put him away. And I believe he can put him away as well because he had that fight won. If he jumped on him when, after he got up in the, in the fourth round, was it? Um, he would have won the fight, but he didn't. He, he just he just took it too relaxed. Do you feel that court. this name that Dylan White is putting out there when he's saying, I'm the can man, anybody who wants it can get it. Do you think that's a bit of a myth? Because the best belt he's got at home is a British title against Ian Lewinson. Or Ian, Ian Lewinson, yeah, and it were vacant. Now, he's not the hunter fight back, but he, he's saying it's because he wants to him because he wants to even the score. But yet, he, he knocked Joshua back at Wembley for five million for all the belts. Do you feel that he should change his name to Dillian the Can't Man? Why? What do you think? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, 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 judging on what happened in his last fight, I would say that he's waiting for the main fight. Why he's not the other guy back, I ain't got a clue. Yeah. But he's the only man that knows at the end of the day, or his yeah. camp knows. I mean, yeah. All right, then. Uh, Has it gone, gone back with Mark Tibbs? Should it, well, I don't. I think that boat sailed now. Is it so? I thought he was getting back with him. No, no, no. no. I don't think that's going to happen now. So I, much more. And I, I don't know. I mean, but they could do, but I very much doubt that he'd go back, Dylan. I think he's too headstrong, isn't he, Dylan? Because he's going to have to go back and apologise, isn't he, for what's going on. And But sometimes... You're best off holding your hand up and saying, you know what, I made a mistake. I thought the grass was greener, Simple. but it wasn't. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, moving on then. Tyson Fury against Caballel, December 5th. Is it a good fight or, or, it, uh, or is it abusing the fans with a pay-per-view? It's just um, a, a quick earner for Tyson. Uh, waste of time. Opponent. I don't know really much about him. I haven't really looked into him. Um, he should have fought that um, that Swiss guy, I think, that busted his eye up last time and get the oh, scores so of him. Correct. That's the fight for, 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 for Joshua, um, for Tyson Fury now. Um, and I'll, if I was him, I'd want to, um, you know, clean the act up. And put him away quick, like he's done with the rest, like his last fight with uh, Wilder. Um, it's it's speed speed. You know, I, I, I don't I don't think Frank would want him to be in that fight because he may lose. You know, if he went to that fight um, personally, because I think the other guy he's hungry um, and he wants he wants the titles. He wants he wants to be number one. And he's and he, like he said, you know, he's promised his father that he'll get it and he will get it one day. It will be his turn one day. Um, but when it was first spoke about about two three weeks ago, that that fight may happen. I thought, great, that's a perfect fight for Tyson. He can prove himself um, better than he was last time because maybe he had a, uh, an off day last time. He he fought that guy. Um, I believe he had an off day because boxers do have off days, and when you've got an off day, you can't put it on, which hence caused him the you know busted eye. Um, really, honestly, that, that fight could have been stopped or maybe should have been stopped for the condition of that eye. But um, obviously it didn't. Um, it carried on. But uh, I would want to, you know, fix the score and get him on for the next fight and, and prove that Tyson Fury is, is a, a bit a far superior man than, than the guy who's done damage to him. He's only kind of given him damage in, in his career, I think. Be a great fight. Yeah. Uh, well, I think how they're going to sell it is Caballero's undefeated and he beat Chisora a few years ago, schooled him, and he's got a decent ranking. That's how I think they're going to sell it. And if he can fight Chisora and beat him, Chisora's just been on pay per view again. So they'll say, well, he's good enough for Tyson Fury in a, in a tick over until he gets Joshua. That's how I think they'll Frank will sell it, old brick top. Yeah, possibly. I think that fight would happen because I've, I've, like I, said, I don't know much about the guy, but I think it's a, an easier fight than that um, the one that busted his eye up. All right then. Uh, 
Joe Joyce against Dubois, who are you picking, Mick? Oh, what, you want to have a quick snack then, do you? Yeah, I'll go for Dubois. Don't win there. Daniel well, Dubois. Is that what you're going to go for? We'll leave that one then. You believe that one? Sure, mate. Do you believe he'll win as well? Yeah, I think he'd be too fresh. I don't, I, I don't think Joe uh, Joyce has got the footwork to deal with Dubois. I think he's a bit like Frankenstein, isn't he? He is, and um, he's a bit, uh, yeah, he's a bit square on. A bit, um, he's a bit sort of. I don't put a lot of power into his. He just punches. He doesn't f push his body. You know, his body's just upright. He's doing this business, isn't he? If he could just twist it a bit, and he gets so much more power in there, but he doesn't. Uh, I don't know who's training. Do you know who's training him at the moment? I don't know, but I know that uh, Martin Bowers has done a great job with uh, Daniel Dubois. He doesn't get the credit or he doesn't get the recognition like other people do. Now, Martin's done a great job with him. Um, you, don't get, right. you don't get Martin Bowers hanging out at the back of people on IFL, do you? <laughs> no. Well, no. I'm all right. Mine, 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 mine's a good trainer. Martin's a good trainer, but it's the same old people on IFL and Boxing Social doing the same old rounds of interviews can we mix it up and have there's, there's 25 people doing the same interviews on boxing social seconds out ifl can and we I fill up with this fucking deck ko as well yeah deck ko yeah oh you know it yeah. can we mix it up? Easy, easy. can we mix it up and have different people on these channels Oh, it looks, it looks, I won't worry about it because you know what? It looks bad for him, doesn't he? Because as he's doing the same thing, same question, same answer to everyone. Yeah. All right, then. Well, I'm going to end it on Coogan's interview with Chisora. Did you think it was a poor job to create a bit of controversy where Derek had a go at him about he was the only one having access in the bubble? Or do you think that? Derek mugged him off and Coogan put it out for views. There again, it's, it's down to um, the one man and only, isn't it? Eddie. He got him one. He's pulling all Eddie, things, isn't it? He's, he's looking arse, isn't he, with Eddie probably, I don't know, and Eddie's got him in there. And Derek, don't, don't, <laughs> I find Derek quite funny when what he comes out with and tells him to fuck off out of his room, you know, and why you give someone else a bit of a... Well, Derek's saying basically in a nutshell, why are you getting all the work all the time when someone else is? Well, I'm not I'm just being put to, to, to come and do the work. Yeah, but well, why don't you give someone else a leg up? You know, why don't you do that? And it's like, well, well who's going to pay my water bills? <laughs> I thought that was a cracker. Who's going to pay my water bills? That can come out of a statement like that, you know? Yeah. So basically, he's fucking hanging on, getting in there with people, whatever. I don't want to, yeah, it is what it is. They, they're doing what they're doing because of one man again, Eddie. Um, but Chizora was a bit of a character in how he he said, you know, tell him where to go and, uh, and put it on him basically in the sense that he gives someone else a piece of bread, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he said, well, no, you know, I've got a war bill pay. I thought the war bill was a cracker. Hmm. You're going to probably listen to this and laugh. Uh, I think that's about it then, Mick, for today. Did you find John Fury? Not heard from him, mate. Have you heard of him? Anyone found him? Any sign of him? What do you think, mate? Well, you can vote most of that new gym opened up in that football pitch place, whatever they are, you know. There was a little thing come out and he's he's training there. We don't need these big gyms and big names and this and that. We've got our own gym with the biggest punch bag in there, you know. Uh, I mean, you must have seen that little bit of a trailer of a, a video he put out or someone put out. Um, so they're, they're training up there, probably um, in a little gym. Good luck to them, you know. Why don't you uh, give his manager a ring, Mick, now on air? His manager ain't worth a toss, mate. Hmm. Give him a ring on air? Yeah, give him a ring, yeah. Oh, his manager? Yeah. Oh, I was seeing that phone that I'm talking to you with. Um, All right, no worries. Who? No, no worries, mate. No worries. If, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen next year, isn't it? You and John. If it don't happen, it won't be for one to try and will it? I suppose. It's a fight to end the day. Isn't it? Listen, at the end of the day, um, 
are you saying ring the manager? The, the fighter, sorry, John Fury is the one that should be telling the manager to ring me. He's got my number. They've all got my number. Mm. You know? So why don't they ring me? So do you remember John's last shout out? I think the training's rubbed down on me and I'll take anyone on it. I'm the best in the world, yeah? Mm. Ring me. Give me a call. I'm there. Yeah? That's his last video. Well, Mr. John Fury, if you're listening to this video, which you will, you've got my number, or your manager's got my number, or people you know have got my number, give me a ring, because you are still on my list, my bucket list for that. And I promise you it's going to happen. Yeah, so get your fucking ass together and do it. I'm waiting for your number, your phone call. And I'm getting a date still sorted out. I know it's taking a bit of time. We want it done properly, professionally, as is the, the only word to do it, yeah? So we will come back with a date soon and try and speak to your manager. Oh, we'll have all contracts ready for you to sign and hopefully shine on the night. So what I've got to say to you, I'm still hungry for you. You're on my bucket list. Yeah, you. Uh... All right then, Mick. Well, listen, it's been nice to speak to you. I'm off to uh, to a paper shop near uh, Lynn Norman Morland's prison in a minute to pay my mate's paper bill because he's doing a big sentence in there. Oh, right. uh, I He used to get Sunday Sport, or is it Daily Sport? I'm, get, I'm going to order hey. him today. I'm going to hey, order him this Mick, right? Daily Mail every day and Sunday Mail on a Sunday. He'll, he'll go berserk. But if he reads them, he can't be ringing me up saying he's bored because it takes about seven hours to read every page on the Daily Daily Mail. And, it, and it's all about spending, killing time in it, jail. And, yeah. uh, and the game that and uh, some top shelf magazines and Razzle Fiesta Park Lane, jug, Big Jugs Monthly, whatever they call it. FHM loaded as squires, you know, all that stuff. Because when he comes on visits with his missus, he rips them things out of pages and rubs it on them. You know, the uh, aftershaves that you get with magazines. <laughs> we used to do in jail because you're not allowed aftershave in prison, are you? But Is that what John used to do? I don't know about John, he went in jail with me, but that's what I used to do if I'm going on a visit. <laughs> but, he used uh, to do other things, didn't he? I know, yeah. But So I'm going to get off down there. It's only... Half an hour, that moment. You know what? I'll take my half to you, Paul, if you're doing things like that. Is that you know, you're doing, doing well, mate, helping someone out and, um, you know, being there for them when they're in a difficult situation. Oh. Well, uh, you know, you know there. yourself, so, you yeah. know. People were there for me when I did mine. Some people, um, and I've told them about it, but a lot of people have their own life to lead, so I didn't really take it personally, unless I dwell on it. But uh, he, it's his first sentence, and it's quite a big one. Like, and some of his mates have stood by him, and some aren't, but he's a good kid. But people get the sons in them situations by trying to take shortcuts, don't they, in life? And hopefully, when he gets out in about six years, he'll be all right. So, he's doing 15 years. So, all right. All right, then, mate. Well, listen, you take care. Keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Don't have nightmares, Mick, about John Fury. I have to, but he's in my face every day. <laughs> well, you've got pictures of him stuck on your mirror in the bathroom. I, love, bridge, I, I, love, I love him every morning. And in my gym, I've got a big, massive poster of him as well. I love him in there. I just keep fucking off. I think you've been watching too much Rocky for me, can't you, wee? Rocky, where he's listen, got... Listen, I grew up with all the Rockies, mate. They are the, they are the best. The music's the best. That's why I've been inspired all my life through that music. You know, I'm not ashamed to say it. I am. I have. I'll do it. Um, Jay, we so are on fire on mate. Skipping and that. I'm in the gym all the time. And they're going, oh, fucking all that rocky music again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they, turn it off. they ain't got the balls to turn it off. They can't turn it off. Well, no worries then, mate. Well, listen, you take care, mate. Have a great Thank weekend. You, Have a good day. And well done for doing that for your mate. No, I don't know, I do it every month, but I every three you're months. You're a good Samaritan. All right then, mate. You take care. Cheers, pal. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate.
Well, that was Mickey Field. I enjoyed that. Uh, he's always a good guest, Mick. Uh, so weekends here now. So quick blast down to Atfield and uh, sort my mate's paper bill out and uh, have a good weekend, all you Porky followers. Peace out.